Hi, Twin Flames. I'm back for another reading, and this time it's for you, Gemini. So welcome to my channel. If this is your first time, you're most welcome here. And this is a reading for Twin Flames who have Gemini somewhere in their sign. It doesn't have to be your sun sign. It doesn't have to be your sign. It can be your Twin Flames sign or somewhere in their chart. So I'm going to be using the Secret Language of Light. And this is such a beautiful deck. Um, I'm really drawn to like pinks and purples today, and that deck really called to me. Um, so we're going to shuffle and see what's coming up. What are the energies that you're facing in your Twin Flame Union? So as I do this, I want to share, I also at this time have a reading that is uh, that I record for each person differently. Like it's a separate reading. It's not a pre-recorded reading. Um, and this is revealing your biggest block to harmonious twin flame union so i highly recommend that it's very to the point and um, it's on my website twinflamesheartsdesire.com so check that out okay so we're kind of warming the cards up and asking the divine asking spirit to give us the message for the highest good of all what kind of energies is gemini facing now in their twin flame union so this is a timeless reading so it's whenever you hear this reading they're, they're coming out um this message is something you need to hear so let's see the first one good nothing has gone wrong nothing has gone wrong so some of you are in a situation where you're kind of looking at what you've done in your twin flame union is like i did it wrong or i I messed up and I called them or I messed up and they texted them and I'm telling you, you can't mess up your twin flame union. Your, your twin flame union is indestructible. You're only learning, right? You also need to look at it like texting your twin flame is not wrong. It's not wrong to think of your twin flame because they're you. You share one consciousness. You are one with your twin flame and they're one with you. So you can let go of this idea that you're not allowed to do whatever it is, but just learn from the experience. If you're texting your twin flame 10 times a day and they're not responding, it's just a learning experience. But truthfully, if you look at this yin yang symbol, that's a very um, important twin flame sign because that's really how your union is. Like the divine masculine and the divine feminine are one, right? You're not separate from your twin flame. You're one and you, you are complementary energies, not carbon copies. So nothing has gone wrong. The next card, we've got focus. So a lot of you may be kind of um, focusing on the wrong thing. And I don't want to say wrong with a heaviness. I want to say like your focus is on love itself, right? Your focus is on your union. And it's okay to double down your effort in healing separation consciousness. You don't heal your union by running away from what it is you have to heal, and some of you have learned somewhere that um, like avoidance and not facing what your twin flame is showing you is going gonna, is gonna to lead you into harmony. And it's important to give to yourself and do things and, and choose to nourish yourself. You've got to eat food. You have to live in the world. You, you need to experience some sunshine, right? But don't let those things replace your inner work because the inner work is how you heal through what's bothering you. The external world is there as a tool to show you what needs to be healed. So Gemini, focus on love. Focus on loving yourself and moving through your challenges and let it be light and let it be fun and easy. Next card, soul mating. <laughs> That's so funny to me. Um, so this energy of this card brings a couple of things to mind. So first, the world at large is not using the word twin flame and soulmate properly for the most part, right? There's people that are, but in the Twin Flames Universe community, when we say soulmate, we mean anybody who's not your twin flame. This can be your karmic partner is a type of soulmate, a spouse that's not your twin flame type of soulmate, a sister, brother, friend, family member, parent, 
Those are types of soulmates. And what a soulmate is, is a person or a soul that um, comes into your life for a short time and then they don't stay with you eternally. It's not your perfect partner who is one with you on every level of your being for eternity. That's your twin flame. So, okay, that said, um, if we look at this card as a card that's talking about soulmates as I've defined it here, there may be some relationships that you need to let go of. And I don't mean throw them in the trash can. What I mean is you're holding on on some level to certain relationships that don't need to be put in the place where you're putting them. You're putting them in a, in a place that's not appropriate. So if you have a best friend in front of your twin flame, it's okay to have that friend, but your twin flame is your best friend. If you are with a hairbrush or a karmic partner, if you're married to someone else, that's a soulmate. Your twin flame's not going to come and rescue you from your current marriage and vice versa, by the way. You need to choose to be with your twin flame. Now, the other meaning of this card is that perhaps the creator of the card got, you know, they don't know about the term twin flames and they mean twin flame because if you look at this card um, and you replace the world, the word soul mating with twin flaming, it's, there's a lot of love here for you. So there's, for whatever I shared about this card, whatever resonates with you the most, that's what you're supposed to hear right now that either this is a twin flame confirmation for you or, and only you can confirm that, by the way. I don't confirm people's twin flames. You you need to hear that. Or this card is inviting you to let go of soulmate relationships. So, cool. The next card, manifestation. It's a horizontal card. Ooh, manifestation. So this is a pretty card. I'm going to look at it for a second for myself. It's really pretty. It's like, there's like a beautiful dawn light above the earth and just it's just so soft and gentle. That's how manifesting is. And when I hear people sometimes talk about manifesting, I'm like, you talk about it like it's some football game linebackers blasting through like your manifestation. Sorry, that was a funny voice. But that's kind of like what, you know, Gemini, you, you can start to realize that man, you can manifest anything. Like manifestation is a thing. It's a spiritual activity and what you desire, you can bring into your reality. But one thing I want to share is that manifesting physical things, you can, you can be a millionaire. There's like meditations you can do to attract money or even your twin flame into your life. But once you have those things, cause you'll get them, the happiness that you think you're going to get from those things isn't, isn't where you're going to get this happiness, right? You get the happiness from within, from with your relationship with your creator. So this is like kind of what you need to look at, Gemini, about manifesting. What's your purpose in manifesting the things? Are you thinking that you'll be happier when you have them? Because you won't. You're just going to have them. It's going to be nice. But manifesting comes normally. The things that you have in your life are only, though, a reflection of what's within. They're reflecting you, your joy. You can have, you see this, like what I'm talking about is like examples of people who have millions of dollars and yet they're really unhappy, right? So I know that you know this already. I know you, your joy doesn't come from physical things. You're allowed to have physical things. Fine. Do the ascension path with physical things. You don't, you don't need to heal, you know, in poverty anymore. You can heal in abundance. But the thing is, is that you your joy comes from within first and then it's reflected externally. Let's do one more card for you. Oh, okay. We got some channeling going on. It means I'm going to pull another card for you. Whispers. Okay. I think we're being trolled here. I, I want to talk about these two briefly because I am going to pull another one. Remember, and these, these cards look similar. Remember that... Um, Love will speak as a whisper and tell you what to do gently, whereas ego will scream loudly and first. So that's what these are about. Like, if you want to connect with what spirit is telling you, look for the most peaceful voice, the one that feels like chill, Gemini, chill, the chill voice. Last card. Yeah, good. 
So look to your authentic truth. What is true for you? And what I mean by that is, um, you know, sometimes people mistake their fears for truth. They mistake their illusions about themselves as truth. Well, twin flames, you know, that's too hard. Only certain people get their twin flames. You might think that's the truth, but it's not. Your twin flame is designed to be with you. What is your authentic truth? Keyword here, authentic. So don't believe the lies that are disguising themselves as truth, and you'll know that they're disguising themselves as truth because they'll feel bad, right? The things that feel good are typically true. So Gemini, that's your homework. <laughs> you got a lot of homework in this reading. Thank you so much for being here. I hope this has helped you on your twin flame journey. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I have a lot of readings and twin flame guidance and clarity on this channel. So be prepared for lots of healing and your next steps. And if you'd like to go deeper and really heal all the blocks to your harmonious union, you want to try Twin Flame Ascension School and Twin Flame Ascension Coaching. And I can show you how to access both of those things. So if you'd like to try that, you can book an introductory session with me. They're available on my website, twinflamesheartsdesire.com, and everything is in the description box below. So thank you so much, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.